This episode, an interview with AJ from Greenshire Handyman, that's a San Antonio, Texas handyman service, and the Handyman Process, AJ's YouTube channel. AJ is an active member of the Handyman Pros Facebook group and a longtime listener to the Handyman Pros radio show. We contacted AJ for an interview and ended up with a two-part show. Welcome to the Handyman Pros Radio Show, home improvement and maintenance tips from the pros. Thanks for listening to another edition of the Handyman Pros Radio Show, where our goal is to help save you time, money, and aggravation on your home maintenance and repair. This edition is entitled, An Interview with AJ from Greenshire Handyman and the Handyman Process. And as always, to help me explain, my ever oh. cheerful co-host and old buddy, <clears throat> Johnny, yes. Johnny, yes, sir. what's been going yes, on? Sir. Well, what's been going on? Yeah. Well, you know, we're gonna uh, we're gonna roll on out to uh, San Antonio here in a couple minutes uh, and talk to uh, talk to AJ. I know that you had some conversation with him, and I'm I'm really looking forward to that. Um, and I would, uh, at, you know, after this interview, I hope everybody uh, gets to uh, gets to enjoy this and uh, get on our Facebook page and and. Uh, and contact AJ. So oh, perfect. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Well, that's a great segue. And here is our first episode with AJ Corcoran. And we're here with AJ. AJ, welcome. Yeah, thanks. Hey, AJ. Thanks for being here. Really appreciate it. Yeah, my pleasure. Yeah. Looking forward to it. So, AJ, give us some background on you. We want to hear your story, you know, and why you started Greenshire Handyman. Sure. Yeah. Um, so I was born and raised in New York, uh, born in the Bronx, grew up uh, about an hour north of, of New York City, um, you know, did all my schooling up there, did a little bit of carpentry school towards the end of high school. Uh, and then right after that, joined the Navy and spent uh, about 22 years in the Navy, both active duty and, and reserve time. Um, so with that with that Navy experience, I've got to travel around, live pretty much all over the place, got married along the way. I have a, a wife and uh, two boys. Um, and a few years ago, like, first of all, I've always enjoyed building things. I've always have been handy my whole life. And it's funny because if you're handy, you assume everybody else is, but I have so many clients that tell me, no, no, my, my so-and-so is not handy. So, uh, <laughs> so, um, the way I got into the handyman business is, um, about a year ago, one of my neighbors in the neighborhood here was, was looking for a handyman and she was getting no responses or she was getting burned. People weren't showing up. So I reached out to her and I said, Hey, listen, I don't. I really don't do this professionally, but if you need something done, I'm pretty sure I can take care of it. Uh, so she's like, yeah, that's fantastic. So I went over, took care of the issue, and I didn't realize, but she was a landlord who had several properties. And all of a sudden, it turned into about two months' worth of work. I was at all of her rental properties and then her parents' house and her house. And then I, I just came home, and I told my wife, I said, man, I love this. You know, I was ready to quit my my day job. I said, I work for the government in my day job. I was ready to quit the day job that day and just go into this full time. But, you know, her being the wiser one, she's like, why don't you just do it for a while and kind of see how it goes? Uh, so that kind of started me off on this this part time journey. And my goal is I'm 48 right now. Uh, my goal is by the time I'm 58, if I if I want to retire and go into something, then I can. But I want to have experience kind of along the way. So starting the handyman business has just been great for that because I get to do things that I love. I get to fix things. I get to make some extra money. I love the business side of that, and we'll talk about that a little bit later with uh, some of the YouTube stuff that I've uh, started up. But uh, that's really me, me in a nutshell. Um, a lot of background and experience getting to this point. I, I didn't become handy overnight. I didn't become business savvy overnight. It's through a lot of um, experience uh, and education, and I, I guess I'll end on that education note. Um, so I, right out of high school, I joined the Navy, but uh, when I was about 25 or so, I, I went back to college in the GI Bill and put myself through school in Hawaii. Uh, graduated that, took a job up in the D.C. area, put myself through school on a master's degree, and then um, just had, had taken several other education courses kind of along the way, mostly business and process focused. Um, the only formal training I have handyman wise was the construction experience that I had in my, my vocational school and in, in high school and then the trade schools that I went through in the Navy uh, electronics or aviation electronics. Uh, flight engineer school for a, an aircraft called the P3 and then uh, crew chief school for uh, a Gulfstream aircraft. And then the, the final thing I'll mention there is um, I was enlisted almost my entire career and then I became commissioned, became a supply officer. 
So as that, I was a purchasing agent and, and dealing with a lot of logistics associated with the Navy and got stationed in a couple of places around the, uh, around the world doing that kind of work as well. So that's basically it. Now I'm a handyman or part-time handyman and uh, loving life. Wow. That's quite a, that's quite a background. Um, you know, and, and so that, so for all the folks out there listening, um, you know, my, my, my first knee jerk on that is, you know, getting into the handyman business, uh, you know, can be for anybody, whether it's, yeah. you know, people that, uh, you know, don't know what they're, what they're up to uh, or, or what they're doing or, or what, you know, you, you've got a, you've got a, you know, you've got a, uh, you've got a career going on and you want to just do something on the side. Yeah. I guess that's a better way say, to put it. It's probably, you know, it's, it's important to be passionate about it. Right. Mm -hmm. I think that that's true with any occupation you go into. If you're passionate about the occupation and you want to learn most handymen, they're teaching themselves all the time. Most of the jobs that I do, I've done before, but there's, there's always some jobs I haven't exactly done that. Uh, so I'll go and I'll go and do the research and some reading and talk to other handymen. That's, that's a great thing about the handyman community. Like, it's not like fishing. There's no secrets here, right? If you have a question about tile or drywall, people will, will generally let you know what's going on and give you a bunch of, of ideas. Um, so it's really, it's a, it's a place to learn. It's a place to you know, use your skills and it's a place to make some extra money. Yeah. Well, and that, and that's, you know, it's great to hear that because that's exactly part of the reason why we do this show is just to help people out and give them tips on, on things that sometimes there's always a tip, right? And there's always a tip. And if you get with a really experienced guy, they'll, they'll give you those tips. They don't, you know, yeah. no, there's nothing, like you said, there's nothing new here. I do find it interesting that you've, you've landed on it. And I, I, I want to say one of the things we share a lot of commonalities in that for me, it's not so much about the handymaning, but it's about the, the problem problem solving and yeah, or the yeah, the the uh, variety of jobs i guess i want to say because i'm one i like you i i have a tough time holding i could not sit and do one thing every day for you know 30 years it yeah. just wouldn't wouldn't cut it so for me it that ability to be in a very varied state uh you know where one day we're doing uh, electrical one day we're doing drywall one day we're doing you know whatever i mean really yeah. whatever and yeah. um it really appeals so part time so my story is somewhat similar to yours i actually was was it's a long story but i got s separated from a job my wife just said you know you should be a handyman and i you said something and i just want to open it up and i and i thought well nobody's going to pay me for this and i everybody knows yeah. how to do this stuff. <laughs> that's why i thought yeah. the same thing yeah. yep and, and and it's just not true right i mean it's just not true so I, and I found out, you know, very rapidly, I think, John, you did, too, because we both kind of John and I, we've known each other for a long time. And everybody that we knew from like our flying club, they're all pretty handy because most of them were building airplanes. Right. So yeah. this is remote control stuff and everybody was building. So we all are kind of handy people. And I don't I mean, most of the people I associate with have some skills, at least a little bit. But. My wife was the one. She opened my eyes. She said, "You know, when I my in my previous life, meeting in her with her ex husband, he couldn't fix anything. I mean, nothing. He had a tough time with light bulbs, and um, so uh, it just is amazing how much people don't know and how valuable if you have some skills, how valuable they are. So, I wanted to ask yeah. a question: What sort of For me, it's, it's scheduling. Uh, no doubt it's scheduling because I have uh, two young kids. I have a 17 and a 12 year old. Uh, we have a lot of activities, right? They, they're everything's something's happening after school almost every single day. Uh, so balancing that out. And it was it was tricky because I'm like, I'm like, man, I'm getting these jobs and I'm scheduling and my wife's like, did you did you put that on Thursday afternoon? So and so has a, a swimming practice. I'm like, oh, man. So that is still the biggest struggle with me is figuring out what time. So I, I migrated to on Mondays and Tuesdays, I'll do estimate visits. And most of my estimate visits, I try to do virtually like most uh, handymen. Like if you can get away with a couple of pictures and a description, that's really all you need for, for most jobs. If somebody has a, a super long list and, you know, like this afternoon, I have to go over and take a look at somebody's house just because they have a pretty extensive list. But usually Mondays, Tuesdays, I'll try to do... Uh, estimate visits if I have to go visit somebody. And then Wednesday through uh, Friday, I will um, schedule smaller jobs, jobs that are two or, or three hours. Um, and then 
um, with my day job, I'm fortunate enough to have a kind of a compressed work schedule. So every other Friday I have a day off because I work some extra hours. So every other Friday it becomes a full day for me. So I try to stack two big jobs on the Fridays and then uh, on Saturdays, the Saturdays that I'm available, uh, same thing. I'll try to stack two jobs or I'll try to stack one big job. Uh, very rarely do I work on Sunday, but uh, if, you know, for some reason something has to be done or, you know, a weather event came up because my schedule is usually two, three, four weeks out, depending on what's going on. And if I have to bump it, it screws everything up. So having a little bit of buffer time on Sunday to push somebody into if it works. And I was worried that that people weren't going to want, you know, me coming to their house at 430, 5 o'clock at night or, or Saturday morning at nine. But people love it. Um, because most people aren't home, right? When you want to go, you know, uh, the full-time guys, a lot of, a lot of the, the homeowners aren't home and they, they, they feel uneasy. You know, you build trust with some people, they'll let you in your house and you do all the codes, which I have a few of those, but most people just feel better when they're home and, and, and you can come kind of after they come home from work. So I found that to kind of be a win-win, but uh, the schedule is definitely the, the biggest challenge. And then the second biggest challenge I would probably say is just keeping up with the flood of, of inquiries that comes in. I've actually had to throttle it way back. Um, <laughs> my marketing can be too effective sometimes. So I, I uh, as a part-time solo guy, yeah. um, managing the, my funnel coming in is, uh, is, a, is a big deal for me. Where, where do you find that the, uh, you know, uh, your effectiveness in, in the marketing side is coming from? It's primarily Facebook and uh, Nextdoor. That's where I'm getting most of my leads. Um, probably I don't do a lot of advertising on our next door, a lot of posting, but that seems to be the hot spot, at least in my area in Texas is, uh, just word of mouth. So I'll do a couple of jobs and then people will just start recommending me and then I'll, I'll get flooded for a little bit. Uh, I have a lot of SEO built into my Google site. So I do get a lot of inquiries I'm getting, um, in my area, you know, 500 to 600 views of my website uh, a month. But mm. I have a clear disclaimer on my website that I, I work odd hours, that I have minimum <laughs> show up costs. Because uh, like most handymen, I learned the hard way. Like I started off, and I don't know if we're going to get into pricing later. I started off with bad pricing on my part and then migrated to appropriate pricing, which also helps r restrict those uh, requests coming in. Mm -hmm. And this is all outside of, uh, just for the audience, this is all outside of uh, San Antonio? Yeah, just on the north uh, north east side of San Antonio. So I stay, my perfect circle is um, probably a ten mile radius or ten mile, um, yeah, ten mile radius from my house. Even even smaller than that, five miles. Yep, ninety percent of my work is within five miles. That's funny you say that because um, that's what that would that's what I found is is my uh, kind of the sweet spot is within five miles, and I really don't go outside of it. I don't want to go outside of it. I have different yeah. motivations for for some of this than than some other people, but uh, you know it's. Yeah. But I, I don't I don't like to I don't like to travel like that. You know, I think yeah. I think the win win here. Is, so you've brought up a whole bunch of really yep. good points if you're contemplating getting into the handyman business. Number one, you know, I, I'm just going to reiterate because we're going to go into other things, but I want to reiterate while we've got them out here and they're top of mind for me. So number one is f schedule flow, which I think we all struggle with. I struggle with it terribly. Same. Thing like you do and I work more full-time than than you are so it's always scheduling is always a big deal um, and it's tough uh, pricing I, I was glad to hear you say you you've made your pricing appropriate appropriate yeah. means that your area will justify a certain amount of money and we won't get into direct pricing but but don't undercharge yeah. I think is your point right don't go and say oh I, I want to only make this because as you know uh, there's a lot of other expenses that come up and there's your time. And sometimes, you know, <clears throat> I stopped giving out so-called free estimates as far as a, an in-person visit, right? I'll do it yeah. via over the, over Skype or over the thing, but I don't go and do in-person visits. And just like you, I had to, rest I've severely, I've actually stopped my flow. I actually took some of the SEO out of my, my website so that I stopped getting so many yeah. inquiries because we get you you get overwhelmed with inquiries and you can't even handle the inquiries let alone the work that comes out of them yeah. um, and so um, I think that's like a process that a lot of people go through I know I did whenever I start a business for me and I've started several over the years I always want to try to get the lead flow 
over in an overabundance because that means there's demand, right? Yeah. So if you have a lot of demand, it actually means you can take your pricing up as what it is. But it also yeah. tests the market to see if it's there. Is there actually a market for it? Unlike you two guys, and I like your I like your five mile radius idea too. John John lives in an area where he can do that. You obviously yeah, live too. in an area where you can do that. Mine, not so much. I mean, I, I have a very select uh, geography where I am. And so to get the clients that want to pay the kind of money that I make, I have a very limited, basically a shoreline. I live on a lake. And so I have to just hit the shoreline. And I do have a large number of clients that live on the shoreline. But when you go into the interior, they won't pay the price. Yeah. So I tend to travel a little bit more into a more affluent area of um, the greater Atlanta area where there is where my pricing is actually a bargain is what it ends up being. And I used to, it's a long story, but I used to live there also. So I had some marketing set up for down in that area anyway, but definitely like those things. Keep it local, right? Keep it local. Cause that's a big advantage, especially part-time for you. It's gotta be a huge advantage to not be driving. You yeah. can't drive if you're going to no. do it. You know, if you're trying to do a two or three hour job or two or three hour job, you can't drive an hour to a two or three hour that's job. Right. Exactly. That, yeah just does not make sense. So I, so those, anyway, those are my initial takeaways. So Johnny, ask another question. Cause I just wanted to, I just wanted to pull all that together. Cause there was a lot of really good information. there. No, I mean, I, I, I agree. I, I, you know, that's, that's my, that's my motivation for keeping it, you know, local. Um, yeah. and you know, especially, you know, Larry, you, you just said it, you know, it, it, we, we're kind of in a concentration of where I can, where I can get away with that. So I, I think the other thing is, is that, um, you know, when you become, Known in that area, um, you know, what we always talk about here is you become the uh, a trusted advisor as well. And you get a lot of word of mouth going on of, you know, who's your, you know, how do I take care of this? Well, I, I know AJ, you know, yeah. and one thing leads to another, right, you know, right there. And you probably do, you know, you're probably working for, you know, your customers, neighbors and things like that. So I think um, from a, from somebody who is considering this, I think that's, you know, that's part of the formula. Uh, there's a lot to this that, uh, you know, when you just start off, um, like you just mentioned, and we just, uh, Larry's just addressing about the, uh, about the pricing and, and, and that, yeah. um, there's a lot of those considerations to take place. So I think it's a good thing of, uh, you know, when you're, you just want to stick your toe in the water on being a handyman. Uh, you know, you're, you're learning, you're doing all those kind of things. I guess the other thing is, is that, you know, to me, I feel very comfortable doing a, a variety of some things. And then I will say, I don't do that. Yeah. yeah. I, I say that a lot. Saying no is important. <laughs> Saying no is important. It, it is. Imp it, uh, yes. Go ahead with that, please. Um, I, you know, I, no, I was going to, it's, is, um, especially as a part-time guy like this, like I, there's a variety of things like you mentioned and it, and it, and it, it helps with the flavor of this kind of work. Like you, you enjoy doing these different types of things, but some stuff you just got to say no to, like you just don't have the time, the expertise or tools or, or whatever it is to, to get into. And um, so, you know, especially for the new guys, don't, don't be afraid to, to say no. Cause it, it's, it'd be nice if you can get five years of experience in one year, but you can't, right. You got to take five years to, to get there. Um, so knowing, knowing the evolution of, of your pricing strategy, um, knowing really who, the, the biggest probably advice I can get is, is what do you stand for? What, do you, what is your goal? Because there's um, a, a lot of people that's a race on social media. I, I'll do it for $20. I'll do it for $10. I'll do it for that's, free. Hmm. People trying to establish themselves. But if you look in the long run, like what is your goal? And, and my goal is not to be the lowest price guy. My goal is to be the highest, you know, one of the highest quality guys. I'm not the best handyman out there. I mean, there's tons of guys that do better work, but I'm always going to show up on time. I'm always going to be professional. I'm always um, going to have clear communication with you. That's that's the value that I bring to the table. And for a lot of people, that's what they want. They want somebody that they feel comfortable with in their house. Um, and, and you know that that's happening when people are just giving you the codes to their house and just going in and showing up and, that's really my sweet spot that I'm trying to evolve and get to. But to get there, I went through a gauntlet, right? It's like um, that movie Shawshank Redemption. You know, I, had to, I had to go through a tunnel of crap to come out the other side. <laughs> you know, you have to do that in any new occupation. And the handyman's the same thing. It's just how do you shorten that pipe and, and learn from others? That's why, you know, this podcast and other podcasts and all the other resources that are out there, learn from what others are doing, emulate, you know, find somebody who's doing it the way you want to do it and emulate it and copy them. 
Um, well, sorry, I got off topic a little bit. No, no, but, uh, no, no. It's it's exactly no, because uh, you know the, the the purpose of the purpose of this podcast. Um, you know, our our tagline is to save time, money, and aggravation. But you know, it's also uh, the audience that we we want to uh, address is uh, the actual handymen out there, as well as homeowners, to give them you know the you know the ability to do some of this uh, themselves. Yeah. But along those lines is that you do realize whether you're a handyman or, you know, homeowner, that there are certain things that you can't do uh, that, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll uh, hire out, you'll find somebody that does that, that's, that's very, um, you know, focused on that, uh, whatever that, whatever that might be. But, you know, you need to know your limitations. There's so many people that, uh, you know, that Larry and I have followed up in, in jobs that, uh, that we've been called in to do. That have done awful work. Now that's that's whether you know yeah. uh, I'm not busting on any contractors or anything, but uh, you know the homeowner can you know really mess things up, um, and you have to know your limitations. And I think that's where you know I I have no problem saying no. And I will tell you that um, the responses that I get are you know what I'm you're an honest guy. You know, yeah, I was going to ask you that question, AJ. Have you ever, has that worked? How well does that work for you as a marketing tool? Because I find when I say no, it tends to actually get me more work. That's yeah. what I find because it's exactly that. People think I'm honest, I guess, or you know, or, or they just appreciate the candor because they realize that you're, you know, not everybody can't do everything, right? Yeah, yeah, that's the that's the common theme of my review. So whether you're looking at my Google, my Yelp, um, Nextdoor, Facebook, all the reviews, are, that's the common theme is communicates clearly, showed up on time, trustworthy. And that's really what I'm going for. So it's, it's being validated by um, by those reviews. So. Gee, Johnny, does that sound familiar? Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> and, and yeah, and, I, and, I, and I'll say this is that, um, you know, then you become the trusted advisor and people will call you and say, I don't know if you do this, yeah. but I'm, I need X done. Okay. Um, I, hey, you know what? I don't, I don't really do that or I don't want to, you know, I'm not that guy, you know, let's I say doing repainting the, the whole kitchen cabinets, you know, redoing something yeah. like that. I don't want to yeah. do that, but I know guys that do that. Okay. Yeah. I'm not, you know, I'll recommend them, but you know, you go through, you do your due diligence on them, but you know, at, but I've got, we've got guys that can do all this kind of stuff that, uh, you know, it's like, you know, I, I think the theme here, the thread is just, you know, get, just say no when it's, when it's appropriate. And, uh, you know, Larry, I think, you know, we've all had the same experience. It actually gets you, uh, get you more business. So yeah, I, w I just want to throw out there for our homeowners out there. Part of the reason we have AJ on is, is really for a reason. It's to show that there actually are other people. We met, I met AJ, what, I guess last week and, and I met him via Facebook actually, and then called him up and said, Hey, I think I want to have you on the show. And we're actually going to get into this. This is about his, he's does some YouTube uh, shows, but I love listening to him talk because it validates the fact that there are good people out there in the contracting trades and the, and, as a homeowner, what you need to be hearing are these same stories or these same types of attitudes. AJ says, no, AJ calls you back. AJ shows up on time. I'm sure, although he hasn't said it, I'm sure AJ cleans up after himself. Is that correct? <laughs> it's correct. Yes. Um, I, you know, all of these basic things, I'm sure AJ has great respect for someone's home in just a general sense and that he probably asks to take off his, you know, do I, I need my funny. shoes on or shoes off? My wife's you know? Japanese, so that's that's another signature thing. Oh. I always take off my shoes. I just have yep. slip-on yep. Crocs, you know, unless I'm working outside, it's it, they're always off. Yeah, yeah. It, it little, it's, it's the little things, folks, but these are the little things that make a difference when you're hiring a contractor. Instead of the guy that walks in, I'm, pick, I'm making a gross generalization, but walks in with a cigarette in his mouth, his boots are muddy, he's five minutes late or ten minutes late or maybe four hours late, uh, at least he showed up. Um, you know, he hasn't called the, the this, the that, and I'm describing experiences that almost everybody's had from time to time. Your, yeah. your initial job is exactly the kind of thing that I think anybody that's hired anybody has has had you know your initial contact the, the woman with the the uh, uh, six rental houses and I have to say folks when I, I have rental houses everybody know if you listen to the show you know that but I have to laugh because I, I was saying to AJ when I first talked to him I said surprise you're in the handyman business you know like, like oops <laughs> you know, I wanted to can I follow up to one thing that, that John mentioned about you know so I have 
I think if you're in this business, eventually you'll have contacts as well, you know, plumbers and electricians that you, you source out to. It's important to know that that's an extension of your brand. Yep. So I don't, I don't take recommending people lightly. And it's like for almost eight months, I couldn't recommend an electrician because I didn't know a good one. Um, everybody that I had heard of, I just didn't know. And I go out and I meet with these guys before I recommend them. And I, I validate it with some other customers because in me, they're, they're a representative of my brand of Greenshire. Hey, that, no, I'll, I'll echo that because Larry and I, when we when we got into this, um, is that we want one of the strategies was to put in a network of uh, very select people that we could recommend. Uh, and, uh, we actually went out to dinner with the electrician and his wife, you know, they had it there and we wanted what our, our goal was on that one was that we wanted to find people that were in a smaller business, smaller electrical business that were building it and young people that were like really go getters that were, were doing, were doing good work, expanding business. And that's how I got to meet, you know, the, the, the plumber that I recommend or the electrician that, that, uh, that we like recommend or, you know, so on and so forth. Or I've been on job sites with guys. I've watched them very carefully as they've, you know, either done cabinet painting or they've done re redoing kitchens or, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, and you're absolutely right. It's an extension of your brand. Um, and the only, I just always say, Hey, you know what? I'll recommend them and go through your due diligence. And, and, and most times they're like, man, this guy is great. Yeah, yeah, and so, and it's uh, it's great it's great reciprocity uh, back and forth as well. So perfect, yeah. Johnny. I wanted to just say that that is a two edged sword. So make sure when you work for those people that you carry on the highest expectations for them as well. So that's a that's yeah. that double edged sword. If if you have the high expect expect high expectations, give high expectations. If you don't, you're you're you defeat the purpose because you want the referrals going both ways if possible. Exactly, yeah, yeah, you know. Exactly. Um, yeah, and th and those are those are just good. You know, that's just this is great, just business advice. Uh, I want to thank AJ from Greenshire Handyman in San Antonio for his time. That concludes part one, folks. Make sure you listen to part two next week on the Handyman Pros Radio Show.